right, so we just finished talking about intersects, which is a type of atypical development. Now we're going to talk about some additional types of atypical development that can happen in our genetic development. One type is the number of chromosomes that we might have. Perhaps you have an extra or a missing chromosome in your karyotype. Another type of atypical development is when your inherited alleles lead to some atypical traits. And the last one is what happens when you don't inherit these atypical alleles, but when you experience a mutation in your alleles that lead to atypical traits. So there's three large categories we're going to talk about. The first one with number of chromosomes, well, this tends to be not so good. In inheriting an extra or missing a chromosome most often leads to fatality and leads to a miscarriage very early on in a pregnancy. There are some conditions that maybe will lead to a miscarriage at some point in the pregnancy. For instance, we know there's a condition known as triploidy. This is when an individual actually inherits three sets of chromosomes. So rather than two sets of 23, they have three sets of 23 leading to 69 chromosomes. This is not possible to survive with this condition, but we have found fetuses that have made it late into a pregnancy with this condition. There's also Edwards syndrome. So this is known as trisomy 18. This is when there is an extra chromosome on the 18th pair, and this tends to be fatal within the first year of life. So in most cases, this doesn't tend to work out good, but there's two exceptions. There's when there is an atypical number of chromosomes on the sex chromosomes and with your 21st pair. So we're going to talk about these sex chromosome atypicalities as well as trisomy 21. Now, we were just talking about some sex chromosome atypicalities, so we just mentioned Turner syndrome and Klinefelter syndrome. Turner syndrome is when there is only one X chromosome, and there's no second X, and there's no Y, and a person only has one X chromosome. So that was talked about in detail in our last section. We also talked in detail about Klinefelter syndrome, when a person has an extra sex chromosome leading to three in an XXY pattern. This tends to be fine, an individual just goes on to have atypical sex characteristics, but outside of their sexual development, it doesn't seem to impact their physical health. Then we have another possibility, where there is three sex chromosomes, but in a different pattern. Instead of XXY, now it's XYY. What happens here is these people don't tend to be intersex, they only have one X chromosome, so they're not going to develop the breast development typically associated with females, but with the two Ys, they tend to have a higher level of testosterone. So much that historically, these individuals were sometimes referred to as super male. These individuals tend to be extra tall, with extra deep voices, and a bit more body hair. They also may sweat a little bit more. Historically, it was thought these individuals might be tied to criminal behavior and aggression. That has since been debunked. Then we have trisomy X and tetrasomy X. These are similar conditions in that an individual tends to have three or four sex chromosomes, all of which are X's. Both of these conditions tend to be underdiagnosed because they tend to uh, not be linked with too much. We tend to find some individuals are a bit taller on average, but they tend to develop as typically developed females in most cases. Though with tetrasomy X, we have only found less than 100 diagnosed cases in history ever. Some of them may need an extra little bit of help with their speech development and their language development, but there doesn't seem to be many other causes for concern. Definitely none of these are fatal conditions. As long as a person has at least one X chromosome, the rest of our sex chromosomes tend to be pretty plastic and flexible. Now the other type of atypical chromosome count that is not fatal is trisomy 21. There can be some heightened health risks associated with trisomy 1, also known as Down syndrome. So we know that individuals with trisomy 21 or Down syndrome tend to have a heightened level of intellectual disability. They may not be able to go on and complete high school or go to university. In many cases, they can get an elementary education and can hold jobs that require menial or physical tasks. We do know that individuals with trisomy 21 tend to have a very social and upbeat temperament that they tend to be very curious and very people-oriented. However, this condition is also linked with dramatic heart atypicalities. Sometimes there's a hole in the heart when the babies are born, or they may require multiple heart surgeries. So it's important to understand that a person with trisomy 21 may have to undergo a heart surgery soon after being born, for instance. 
we also know of certain phenotypical expressions associated with Down syndrome. For instance, most individuals tend to have a bit of a shorter neck, a broader nose, their eyes may be more spaced out, and their tongue may not sit as well in the lower cavity of their mouth, and while just resting or not eating, their tongue may protrude from their lips a little bit, just due to the size of their jaw. And so it's important to stress that individuals with trisomy 21 can go on to have very fulfilling and loving lives. They can get married, some of them can live on their own or in adult group homes, they can have jobs, and they are now living longer and longer through medical advances. A person with trisomy 21 may live to their 40s and 50s, so it's certainly not something that's considered a fatal condition.